Well, it's Tuesday, and I've been on a few projects around here. Taxes and the old expression is don't get me started. Anyway, I wanted to just touch bases on some of the things we talked about on Tuesday because there have been some great comments in the comment section addressing some of the things that I said. So I just, I just want to clarify a few things. First off, I said we run some of our LEDs on a three volt supply. I run my switch stands that way and Karen does almost all of her dioramas that way because she uses two little one and a half volt button batteries to test everything and that's three volts and so she just just runs the three volts directly to the LEDs. Does that work? Well, for the most part, yeah. Is it a good idea? No, it is not a good idea. Um, you want to have a current limiting resistor. You want to treat a diode, again, as a binary switch, something that's either on or off and just simply passes current through itself. A light bulb, by contrast, passes current through it all the time, and the more voltage you apply, the more current that, that goes through there. It's pretty logical where an LED is like a switch that's going to come on somewhere around one and a half volts. Every LED is a little bit different. It says in the spec sheet what the voltage forward is. That's the voltage that will turn it on. And then at that point, it's simply on. And if you're not driving it into a load, it's sort of like hooking up a switch to a power source that simply shorted out and you throw the switch and you now have a, a variable on and off short. Well, that's not a really smart way to run a circuit. You want to have a load in your circuit, and the way we do that with LEDs is the LED simply turns on a load, which is a load resistor, and we went through the whole math on how you can figure out exactly what resistor you need to use in your circuit. Does it work to just run them on three volts? The three volts is enough to turn it on and then just sort of simply let it drive itself into a dead short? Well, yeah. The downside is some LEDs might not come on at all at that voltage. You're operating right close to the voltage that it takes to turn them on. Some might come on sort of halfway and some of them might come on at full brightness. There's no consistency, and so it's just a bad idea in general. And if I had it to do over again with my switch stands, I wouldn't have done it that way. But at the time, I was thinking of LEDs in the same way that you think of little grain of wheat lights or something. Don't, don't think of them that way. If I had it to do over again, I think what I'd use instead of a 3 volt is a 5 volt simply because you're wasting less current and I don't know maybe it's just part of my brain that says don't waste waste not want not um, therefore you're using a much smaller resistor not that that makes any difference doesn't cost any different or anything but you're operating at somewhere around I don't know 100 ohms it depends on the LED and everything but they'll all run in a 5 volt circuit and then it just depends on the LED what resistor you're going to run. Uh, everything else is running on a 12 volt bus that runs all the way around the railroad. So without doing anything different, I could have simply run the 12 volts to all of my switch stands and just provided the necessary uh, drop in resistor or load resistor might be a better way to express that which given the, the surface mount LEDs that I'm using would be somewhere right around 500 ohms. Anyway, just to clarify that, yes, we do that. No, it's not a good idea. We just, I just wanted to mention that, that we do that and it does, does air quotes work, but it's, it's not a very, it's not a great way to proceed. Item number two, I said, if you want to dim the LED, uh, the way they dim commercial LEDs, like the ones that go in your, your dining room, they've got an entire elaborate LED driver system in there that uses MOSFET transformers or uh, transistors. And uh, they're actually fairly complicated. And I mentioned you need a degree from MIT to figure those things out. 
Well, somebody with a degree from MIT uh, explained in the comments, and it's fun to go through and read that, exactly how you could go about building your own dimmer system uh, to run your railroad on. And so it certainly can be done. It just in it requires using uh, transistors and drivers and um, stuff that I'm not all that aware of. I read through it several times and, and uh, found that it still didn't make any sense to me. So uh, I, I'm sure with the help of my friend Don, if I really wanted to, to figure out a, a dimmer. Uh, another idea, speaking of dimmers, is running LEDs in series. Some people said, can't you just run LEDs in series the same way you do like Christmas lights? Well, yes. And just like Christmas lights, the same problem applies that if one of those LED burns out, the whole system dies. And then you got to figure out which of the LEDs died. You still need to have a load resistor in that circuit. And so I'm not quite sure why you do it. But some of the little fairy lights that you'll see in the stores and that sort of thing will do that. They'll have a whole string of LEDs. and Coincidentally, if you were to break open one of your overhead uh, LEDs that go in your dining room light, you're going to see a whole array of LEDs in there that probably are wired in series. Oddly enough, there's usually one that's not, and then a whole bunch of them that are, and then you've got your usual uh, drivers and, and stuff so that they're dimmable, and dimmable is another one of those air quotes that they don't... They don't dim very nicely, and they don't usually go all the way down, but they're, they're improving that over time. Anyway, I just thought I'd mention that inside there, quite often the, the array of LEDs are mounted in series simply because they're running that on mains at 120 volts, or in some cases on 240 volts. So um, just, to, just to mention that, yes, you can run those, you can wire those up in series. Someone asked, can I put all of my LEDs in parallel and then just have one load resistor? I tried it. It worked. Again, I would say it's really bad form. And one of the reasons is every single LED in that circuit is, is now able to pull whatever current it thinks is appropriate and therefore come on at whatever brightness it thinks is appropriate or maybe even not even come on at all. So I would say, once again, bad form. Just, just keep it simple. One LED, one load resistor, wire that whole thing in parallel to your 12 volt or whatever power supply. Works great, very simple. Even if you're putting six LEDs in a structure, instead of putting the six in one load resistor, just put in six LEDs with six load resistors and run the whole thing in parallel and you'll be much happier and it'll, it'll be much more reliable. Now it also came up that I said you can run LEDs on alternating current if you simply want to dim them down a little bit. And someone said you cannot run an LED on alternating current. Well, sure you can. Uh, it just means that it'll only be on half the time. Does that mean that it will be on at half the brightness? No, not really. It'll appear to be somewhat dimmer, uh, but it won't actually be like a whole lot dimmer. But as it's only on half the time, if you look away quickly, you'll, you'll see that it's flashing. Normally, you wouldn't notice that, that it's flashing on and off 60 times a second. That person recommended adding another diode into the circuit, but you're really just rectifying it back over to DC and it's going to come on at full brightness. I only suggest doing that as a way to dim down a petulant LED that's just too bright. Um, you may not want to do it because you probably don't even have an AC supply <laughs> anywhere under your railroad that you could tie your LED to. Same thing applies with the dropping resistor and everything. It's just exactly the same. The only difference is you're setting up your LED so it only comes on half the time. We're about to get into a fun thing that can be done with LEDs, and that's two-color LEDs. But uh, you can, in theory, kind of make your own two-color LED. If you look inside of a two-color LED, all that's in there is, let's say, a, a red and a green LED wired backwards from each other, and then they're in the same little clear plastic jacket, so it looks like a single LED. 
but inside there are actually two LEDs. So what that means is when you bias it in one direction, it comes on red. When you reverse the polarity, it comes on green. And you can use this for all kinds of fun railroad signaling and, and fun stuff where uh, uh, I used to have those hooked to all of my switch machines. I'm not using switch machines right now, but all my tortoise switch machines, they're just a stall motor, motor and they always have 12 volts running to them. And you reverse the polarity and the thing reverses direction and throws the points on your, your turnout. Well, if you tie a, a two-color LED to that, you can mount that on the front panel of your railroad and just glancing over there, you can see from the color of the LED how the points are aligned. And uh, I even made a little bezel that that uh, looks like a little switch lamp just for the, for the control panel. So you can see at a glance by looking at the control panel which LEDs are, are lined for the main and which ones are, are lined for the diverging route. Kind of a fun and clever and interesting thing. But if you're really doing uh, um, signaling, for example, there is a way uh, because, again, you can run an LED on AC. It just means it only comes on half the time. So if you run AC to a two-color LED, both the red and the green come on, but they alternate rapidly back and forth. And to your eyeball brain, that appears to be yellow. So that way you can get three colors, uh, the three colors incidentally that you need for doing signaling, uh, red, green, and yellow. So we'll, we'll follow up on that on a future video when I don't have income taxes to get done. Anyway, uh, I hope you're finding this informative and, and useful. Do jump into the comments because I'm trying to figure out everybody's comments and questions and everything. So uh, if you have comments and questions, and if you're not a subscriber, please subscribe. It helps everybody out, including yourself, because then the algorithm goes, oh, this person likes trains. Uh, but it also helps us out because they say, oh, people like that video, and the algorithm will direct more people to it. So make sure you're a subscriber. Make sure you're hitting the like button, and those things will help you uh, be directed to the stuff you like, and it will help the stuff you like be directed to you. So it's a win-win situation. Anyway, uh, uh, if you need to be a subscriber and you're not, the easy way is with the upcoming blue button. Zoink! Right there, the blue button. Well, I'm not sure how you found this video on the internet. I hope you didn't find it boring. And we will see you here on Sunday with uh, the Gardner Mill. We'll see you then. Bye-bye.